Hello YouTube artists! I'm so excited to be bringing some fall colors to you. Look at this beautiful leaf set that I found in my yard. Isn't it gorgeous with these bright greens, bright yellows? Look at this leaf here. It has oranges and some almost coral colors. Then there's this really dried up leaf already in the back like burnt sienna. I thought this would be a fun thing to do today with my 2024 updated palette. And I want you to see the gorgeous colors that are here and we're gonna try to match those today. You can see in here with all these oranges, that looks like this part of this leaf. Look at those colors. Isn't that lovely? I love this kind of like um, an orangey red here. I think it's probably one of these. Look how nice that matches. Then we've got these bright greens. I mean, look how bright this is. I think that is probably gonna have to be down here in this row. Let's see if we can match a couple. That one's pretty good. Those two are pretty nice. Let's see if anything over here. These are getting a little too bright over here. And then we've got these darker ones up here. Some more of the kind of olivey greens up there. And then we've got the bright yellows here, even though they don't look that bright anymore here, right? So let's see what they are. They're more like kind of an ochre color. Here's a nice color here, Quinn Burnt Sienna and Yellow Gray. So we're gonna have fun playing with, with colors today. But I wanted to show you that on the color chart so that you can see how easy it is to kind of pick the colors for what you wanna mix. I know that I'm going to have fun with this Da Vinci Mint Green, which is this really bright green here. And that's going to make my mixes for this to keep it nice and bright because you can see the greens up here are much duller. And I'm definitely going to stay in this little section here with the Alizarin Gold, the Quinn Burnt Orange, and the Raw Sienna for all of these kind of colors here. We'll just play with the different colors to see how they mix and get a variety of tones in there. What we're going to do, I've already drawn this here on this page it's like this kind of thing this leaf is not here because I didn't want that dark leaf I want to concentrate on the colors changing for fall and then I have a little strip down here that I'm going to add the colors as I use them I'm not sure if they're gonna all go on there but it's just a little rectangle that I have there and I just want to put some little circles of color it's just a way to indicate what kind of colors I used so this is my palette and I've got a lot of videos about this palette. I will link the video down below in the video description box. And let's just have some fun. What I'm going to do is put on some music, be quiet, and just enjoy the moment of painting my first fall colors. I am so excited about that.
I started added shadows here to the leaves and I thought you might want to see how I do that. I actually lay my leaves down on my paper. So let me find a blank piece of paper here. And I look at the shadows. Can you see the shadow under here? Can you see the shadows here on the paper? Here and here. Underneath here. Underneath here. And I try to mimic those the best that I can. When I am doing shadow colors, I like to look for a purple. So this is my lavender here. This is what lavender looks like. I like to mix lavender and sepia, which is that color but lighter. So think about that kind of tone right there. I like it to be a little different than what is actually painted. So I'm going to just go into my lavender here. A little bit of sepia. More lavender than sepia. And then just a touch of buff titanium. It's not needed, but for this one, I'm trying not to get too purple for my shadows, too violet. It should be a watery mix. my fall leaves turned out. I think they're so fun. Look at how close they are in color, not in value. I didn't quite go as dark, but I love them just the same. And here I've got the color swatches, and I think the shadows add a lot to it. I'm going to bring you up so you can really see the texture. Now when I splash, I'm splashing for texture, but I'm also splashing for values. So you can see in here, I've got some really lovely darks, but then I've got all these really light colored values. And I like that to look like the spottedness of the leaves. Can you see the different spots in here that are kind of lighter value? And by splashing, I like the texture that this really gives me. It gives me like the leaf is drying and crinkled. And when I splash, I can almost hear the crinkly sound of the leaf. And that's why I really love the texture. So let me bring you up close so you can see these. And now I want you to look at this shadow here. Do you see that the shadow here is not connected to the top, but it's connected here? So what that tells you is here is where it's touching the ground. This is actually elevated. So watch my finger, how it kind of goes up like that. That is what that stick is doing. So that's why that shadow is disconnected there. And you can see the shadow here as well. So this part of the branch was actually lifted. So you had the airspace between the branch itself and the shadow. And then down here, 
it was connected underneath the leaf, but then there's airspace here, and then it's connected again at the point because this point is very heavy, so it almost fell to the ground. So that's the fun part about shadows, is it gives you the indication of what's above, what's what's below, what kind of lighting we have. You know, I've got the lighting coming from this side, so it's shadowing my leaves and the sticks that way. But pay attention to that. Don't always draw your shadows right next to everything. When you have airspace like here and here, and you can leave a little bit of white in the paper, let me bring this area up so you can really see how those stems were shadowed. See how much more interesting that is than if you went right next to everything and just made it a mimic of what you already have. Actually, give yourself the airspace in there. It'll be a lot more interesting for your art. If you were inspired by my fall leaves today, please like, comment, or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.